Hello everybody, uh, welcome to the next uh, lecture of statistics in SPSS and today uh, we will finish uh, information about data matrix uh, and uh, we will enter into new topic uh, so we will learn how to define some new properties such as uh, missing values and how to prepare new variables uh, uh, by computing, counting and recoding. But first of all, we have to follow previous discussion about uh, charts or graphs uh, and uh, as we would like uh, once again uh, to uh, do some examples in SPSS environment. So first of all, we will use some data. So if you can visit uh, my personal page at Student Information System, uh, I think the easiest way is if you go into SIS and select subjects. I will wait for a minute. Then enter the code, which is JSM406. It's not necessary to log in for this information. So only enter code JSM406. Then click on search and the result should be statistics in SPSS. And here, if you click on uh, statistics in SPSS, please choose my name, teacher Peter Sokup. And then, please, you can use additional information which is web page uh, with study materials for all my courses. Of course, you can type it as well. You can use it as bookmark in your uh, <coughs> internal browser. It's up to you. No, it's not functioning as well. Is it correct on your computer or not? Yes? What's the problem once again? Okay, so uh, another option, excuse me, is uh, if you uh, log in into SIS or into your email and use uh, email from the last week, this the direct link, I don't know what's the problem, as uh, one hour ago it was without any problem. Okay. So I will use it as well. And I will copy it for you to have the option to write it if you do not have email from the previous lecture. So here it is. Uh, so if you type http samba fsv uh, dot uh, Charles University dot CZ and then wave uh, S O U K P six A S, which is my login, then statistics percentage twenty in percentage twenty SPSS, excuse me for this inconvenience, but it should work, I guess. Let's try. Yeah, it works. And once again, I will check uh, the problem with my general link. No problem will come. Yeah, data change. Okay, so if you type the address or you use the link you have in your email from the last lecture so you can go directly to my web page with all study materials. Maybe I can send you once again email. So let's do it very quickly. 
Star subjects, <laughs> my courses. So you should have, once again, the link in your email if you need it. And uh, for today, please uh, download uh, following materials from my webpage. UVS Master 1999 blah, 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 PDF. Uh, UVS99CZ.SAV. Uh, These are data and questionnaire for uh, European Value Study. We will discuss further about it. And then please also download ISSP 99CZ short SAV as well as ISSP 99QEN uh, <coughs> dot uh, word document. So too fast about UVS and too fast about ISSP 99. That's all necessary for today's lecture. And uh, excuse me for checking convenience, but if you click on right button, uh, so uložit odkaz jako, this is the option save as. Excuse me for this check environment uh, in this classroom, as all classrooms are different here. So the fourth option is for saving. Okay, are you successful or not in downloading? Okay, 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 okay. Any problems? The first one. Yeah. Okay, and if you are successful to download it, so first of all, please open SPSS. So once again, go uh, into Windows button, then select all programs. The first one option, and check it's všechny programy. And then use IBM SPSS statistics, and then please select IBM SPSS Statistics 21, which is correct version for our lecture. So IBM SPSS Statistics and IBM St SPSS Statistics 21. And the next step we would like to do to have possibility to draw some pictures will be to open the file which is called ISSP 99, ISSP 99 CZ short SAV. So please try Open the data file, file, open data, and uh, use uh, data file, which is called ISSP 99CZ short SAV. And that's uh, data file we will use for all lectures for the whole semester. So, uh, now only brief information about this data file. This is real data from uh, social science research uh, in the Czech Republic, which was carried out 15 years ago, so that's why it is uh, called uh, 1999. Uh, and ISSP stands for International Social Survey Program, which is the oldest uh, program of international social science research project originated in 1985. Uh, 
and the Czech Republic uh, uh, joined the project, if I do remember well, in 1992. So currently we have more than uh, 20 years as every year one wave of this ISSP is carried out all over the world. Currently, I guess uh, that there is approximately 50 participating countries from the whole world. So it's quite a big project. So here we have some real data. But this is only part of original data. You can see there are only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight columns, eight variables, but originally there were hundreds of them. So this is only a small piece of original data. I will show you in a few minutes also real data in the full extent, but uh, I think that for our purposes this is very pleasant. We do not have to find in 100, 300 variables, but we have only a few of them. Okay, and uh, only short introduction into data. So if you like to understand the meaning of individual variables, so very easy icon, I think we discussed previously, is this one column with three called stripes, green, red, and blue, and you can read basic information about your data. So the first column called B48, that's variable gender with two options. Code one stands for male, code two stands for female. B7, it's year of birth. Uh, so you can see only two digits are included. It means it will be 19, which is omitted, and then 17, 44, 34, etc., etc. We will use this information later for computation of age for individual respondents. Okay, next variable is called highest education. And it has eight possible options uh, and then some more special options, DKNA, we will discuss further. Then variable, how many years of education did you complete it? The next variable is about personal net income for one month. Next variable is the answer about the question about the last vote participation, then voted party, association to voted party, and the last one uh, variable included in the data file is political orientation from left to right. Uh, one stands for left, five stands for right. Okay, so that's very easy to understand. If you like uh, to know something more about this survey, you can open also the full questionnaire, which is uh, the same name. It means ISSP 99 QEN. Here it is. And you can read all original questions and possible answers here. So it's quite a big one in comparison with our data file. And you can find, for example, uh, B48. And if you click Control F, you can find sex of respondent, male stands for one, female stands for two. So you can see that original coding is also present in data file itself. Okay, so here we have some real data, and now I would like to show you only part of options how to create charts in SPSS environment. First of all, I would like to say that SPSS is maybe not the best equipment or tool for producing of charts. There are some professional chart builders uh, which are only creating charts and cannot compute anything. So take it as it is. SPSS can handle quite a lot of types of charts, but it's not the best tool for charts as well. But it's quite easy to create charts through something that is called chart builder. So if you go into menu, graphs, and then the next option just below, which is called Char Builder. There is only the first question that you should find whether your measurement levels are correct. So maybe not, we will see. So click on OK and believe the data. And uh, here you can see that uh, most of variables are uh, correctly defined as ordinal. There is a small mistake for income, 
as it's not ordinal, it should be defined as scale or cardinal variable, but for most of variables, it's correct. And now we will go only through basic types of possibilities in SPSS, and we will learn only very simply two examples uh, how to create chart in SPSS environment. So I will propose uh, for the first insight to use maybe the most common chart, but statisticians hate this chart, and uh, it's a chart which is called uh, pi or polar. Statisticians always say, please try to eat pies, but do not prepare them as statistical output, uh, but you are not professional statistician, so you can use it as well. So you can select pie chart, and then the process is following. You will take the selected type and move it by the left button of mouse to the draw gallery, so it's prepared for you. And then you can only use some variable you would like to see as results, as slice by. And here is the result, proportion of male and female currently. You can also add something more, but it's very easy uh, to add, so you will do it alone. If you click on OK, so you will see the proportion of male and female in our data. But once again, to see such a big chart, instead of, for example, two figures, proportion of male and female, doesn't make sense. So this is not the best chart you can create. Okay, let's go back and create some better charts through Chart Builder. So once again, crafts and Chart Builder. Click on OK. And let's decide to use another type of chart. Uh, if you like, to erase everything is prepared here for you, click on reset. And everything is at the <coughs> original status. So, and now I would say that the second mostly used chart is bar chart in statistics. You can see there are more subtypes for this chart Eight possible charts can be selected here. So I would propose uh, for a simple discussion to use the second one, which compares two groups. You can see there are some possibilities to compare groups. So take it as it is. And then you can take some options. So for Y axis, so this space, we have to select some variable. So I would propose, for example, years of education. Uh, no, excuse me, it's not categorical. Uh, highest educational level, the third one variable in our data set. And then on X axis, try to move gender. I hope it works. No, it's opposite, excuse me. So I will try to reverse it. So, like this. Oh, it's not functioning here. Okay. So, once again, so I'll try it. Okay, so please select uh, the easiest type uh, for this uh, simple tool. I change it and uh, use highest educational level as. X axis variable, yeah, that's correct. And then if you click on OK, so you will have results. So you can see that uh, the most common category of education in our data set, nearly 500 of respondents achieved vocational level, then vocational visa diploma, more than 400, and then basic or elementary education, 300 uh, uh, secondary without a diploma, nearly the same figure. 
and the lowest figures we can find for incomplete university education and for incomplete basic or elementary education. Of course, by editing, you can add percentages, uh, some special labels, you can change colors, etc., etc. Uh, the easy tool is double click, and then you can change elements in the chart. So we will not do it here. So that's only very easy insight into possibilities of charts. So uh, bar chart and pie chart, most common charts for public. And we will discuss also about some special statistical charts later. So we will discuss about uh, box plot and uh, some special charts uh, next lectures. So these are charts in SPSS. Okay, if you prepare your data, you have to save these data. We discussed previously, last time, how to save data in SAV format. But uh, you can also save your data in another format than SPSS. So we will show basic example how to, for example, save your data and use these data in Microsoft Excel environment. So if you click on File, Save As, and here you have to type some name, for example, my data or something like this. Please don't use spaces. So for example, my data, and you will select the format of your data, for example, Excel 97 through 2003. Uh, it's this extension XLS only. So your data file will be called mydata.xls. And you can click on save. And you can find your data. For example, my data can be uh, found uh, on desktop. So I will close my windows and open my data. And you can see that original data are present in Microsoft Excel environment. The first, second, blah, 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 columns, B48, B7, etc., etc. Only some information is missing, as you do understand, description of individual variables and their values, as Microsoft Excel cannot save this information in its format. But you can also compute something in an Excel environment. You can, for example, prepare a chart in Excel environment as well. So that's very easy way how to use data. An opposite operation is also possible. If you have your data in Microsoft Excel environment and you would like directly to import them into SPSS, so you will go into File, Open Data, and here we will choose XLS format, and then you can select My Data and click Open and OK, and you will have your data once again in SPSS environment. So these are possibilities to save data and use them for the next time. Uh, we discussed previously about saving output, so we can skip it, uh, about exporting output, so you know you can export uh, into Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel environment. Uh, changes in output we also discussed. And now the second example of real data and now it will be full data set. So not only one part of it, but full data set uh, for your insight into a real data file to see how big information can be covered in SPSS environment. So please once again visit SPSS and use file, open, and data. And now please find data file which is called UVS. 99cz.sav. UVS stands for European Value Survey. This is also quite big international survey, uh, which started in 1981, originally, I guess. And uh, it is usually carried out every 10th year. So currently, we have uh, four waves, if I'm counting correctly. So uh, please open UVS 99CZ SAV. 
And now you can see full data matrix for check data only. Approximately 35 countries uh, uh, were included in 1999, but here we have only check data for our purposes. And you can see that the list of variables is nearly endless. If you go to the right, so there are more and more variables, and now we are at the end. So it's quite long, long list of individual variables. And if you would like to understand more deeply into information which is covered by this data file, we can also open original questionnaire, which is UVS Master 1999. We have to only wait a minute. And uh, if you open this document, so at the beginning there is some general information about the survey. Of course you can read it. But the first question, you can find, oh, once again, Here it is, page 55. This is uh, the first page of the questionnaire. And then you can see that the first question, which is coded as V1 variable in data set, so we can check it, uh, V1 variable, it is here. And it was original question about the importance of work in your life. And possible answers were very important, coded as one, quite important, coded as two, not important, coded as three, blah, 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 not at all important, four, and then something what is called DK and A. Then V2, importance of family, etc., etc. And you can check also data file, so go into individual variables and you can see importance of work, importance of family, etc., etc. So this is real data file with all variables included. And now it would be nice to explain DK, NA, or NAP shortages. So what does it mean DK in the questionnaire? Don't know. So usually for all answers, respondents can escape, I would say, from the real answer and can say, I don't know. And usually in data file you can find only code DK. The problem is we do not have any answer. But we know that somebody actively say I don't know. That's also the answer. Maybe you disagree but that's also answer. NA. No, that's NAP. This is usually active, DK, I don't know. NA is no answer. Respondent is silent for the whole time. You are waiting for his or her answer and no response at all. Of course, maybe you are asking, okay, what is the difference between DK and A? There is huge difference. Actively say, I don't know. Passively is silent. So that's a huge difference. And NAP for some questions, Let's imagine, for example, you're asking uh, whether somebody is smoking or not. He or she will say, excuse me, I'm not smoking. And you say, oh, it's a pity, I would like to ask you the next question, which is your uh, favorite brand. And for those who do not smoke, they usually do not have any favorite brand. So you will get answer which is called an AP, not applicable, as you discussed previously. But uh, I would like to, to inform you also that Sometimes these two codes, DK and A, use only one code in data file, so you cannot distinguish between DK and NA. Uh, and uh, the next information which should be added is about classical codes which are used for these DK and A and AP. 
there are two possibilities. If you use classical coding, such as one, two, three, four, very important, up to five, for example, not important at all. So usually for these DK, NA, and AP, we use such codes as seven, eight, or nine. That's one possibility. I would say most common. But for example, this UVS data file uses another formatting and they use negative numbers such as minus one, minus two, and minus three. But usually out of this scale, you use some special artificial codes for these DK and A and AP. But always check your data whether DK and A and AP are present and we will discuss further that usually for your analysis, you have to omit these values from your analysis. You have to define missing values we will discuss later. Okay, so that's real uh, data from European Value Survey and problem of coding. And next problem I would like to add is that if you have some big data, these are not maybe very big, we have only approximately 2,000 respondents, I guess. Let's move down. Yeah, it's uh, 1,908 people included in this data file, so it's not very huge. But let's imagine we will use all countries covered by UVS survey, so it would be approximately 40 countries, so we will have 40 times 2,000, so now we have currently 80,000, it's quite a huge file. And let's imagine you will also take not only data from one UVS survey, but from all four waves, so four times 80,000, etc., etc. So sometimes data files are quite big and complicated to analyze, but uh, believe me that SPSS uh, can handle these sizes very easily and without any problem. Only one problem can be present at your computer, and that's memory of your computer, which is inside your machine. SPSS will take it very easily. So that's very easy information. And then uh, basic info about something what is called data archives. In social sciences, especially in sociology, political science, and partly for psychology, but only partly, data, especially from international surveys and sometimes also from national surveys, are stored in some special computers which are called data archives. And they are <coughs> easily accessed for everybody who is interested in this data. So you can find this data and you can download this data. For example, I can show you, I hope so, it will work. Uh, uh, Czech Data Archive, which is at uh, Czech uh, Sociological Institute uh, at Czech Academy of Science. So I will check it. Yeah. Uh, I will send you the link uh, once again into your email, but now only let's try to find uh, whether it works. Yeah, it seems. Yeah, check social science data archive. Yeah. Yeah, here it is. And if you go into these pages, so you can find quite a lot uh, data files uh, which are present uh, in this uh, data file. There is some special network which is called uh, Nestar. It's international network of uh, data archives and by uh, their access, you can find your data. So for example, in English, here you can see that ISSP data files are present from 92, 93, blah, 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 uh, up to 1999, 
then there are some surveys about uh, youth, surveys about housing, about volunteering, uh, data about social transformation, and many, many others. So this is Czech Data Archive in which after registration you can download data and use them for example for your thesis or another uh, projects. And there are international data archives, one of the closest to the Czech Republic is uh, Central Archive in uh, Köln am Rhein, uh, in which you can find for example data for all countries for ISSP 99 as well as for another waves. Uh, then there are also some special web pages, for example, UVS project, if you type European Value Survey as their own uh, web page with all materials accessible through this web page and many other data files you can find. Uh, I would say that the biggest data archives are in the US, so you can find it nearly about everything in the whole world, so it's only up to you to decide where to go, which data to download, and which data to analyze. So there is huge amount of possibilities to find data. Okay, so that's basic information about uh, real data and data archives. If you will have any question about possibility where to find data, let me know personally or by email and I will try uh, to give you some link or advice where you can find the data. Okay, so we can open the next presentation. Uh, it's uh, the third one and uh, we can continue in our discussion. So, we will discuss about uh, Descriptive statistics currently, and uh, here is short review of descriptive statistic uh, measurements we know. So, from previous lectures, we know central tendency. Excuse me for many mistypo. Uh, this uh, star.sav uh, is a mistake, of course, but we discussed the topic of central tendency. We know how to compute mean, median, mode, and how to interpret these. Today, we should learn something about dispersion or variance, about skewness and kurtosis. And these four are usually basic description for our data, mainly for data which uses cardinal variables. So let's start with variance or dispersion. These are uh, nearly synonymous. So, if we take very easy two pictures. So let's have two groups. One which is very homogeneous and all, for example, income in the group A are nearly the same and one with big, big differences between individuals. Let's take that average income is the same here. So average for A and B is the same. But you can see that here nearly everybody has the same level of the income, but here you can see huge differences. And for measurement of differences between individual values, we use measurement of dispersion or variance. The simplest tool, but very problematic, we will see, is called itself variance. It measures how individual uh, values vary, but let's try to understand what is variance, how to compute variance, and why we usually do not use variance itself, but we use instead of it uh, some another measurement which is called standard deviation. So, if you go back to the first lecture, we discussed that if we would like to compute mean, so we take all individual values and divide it by number of these values. So we sum up all individual values and average them by the number of values. That's formula for mean. 
Now I will give you formula for variance, but of course I do understand that some of you hate all equations and formulas, so I will give you some explanation by chart. So first of all, how to compute variance by formula. So if you compute variance, we usually use symbol S squared, or second power of the S, and it is computed in flowing way. You will take all individual values and subtract from them our average. And you make the square, that's why it is S squared, second power. You sum up for all individual values for all data file and the same manner as Average is sum of all individual values divided by number of respondents. Here we also make the division by number of respondents. So that's variance. Squared differences of individual values from the average or mean divided by number of respondents or cases. Okay, if it seems complicated to you, so now very easy picture which can help you to understand what is behind. So let's take a very easy example with only three respondents I would propose. Let's call them A, B, and C. And here we have some levels, for example, of personal income. A, B, and C. So here it is. This is level of income on y-axis. So first of all, according to this formula, we have to compute average income for all three individual levels. So I would propose that average level for these three values is approximately here, the same as the level for the respondent B. And now, according to this formula, we would like to subtract individual values and average. So that's very easy. So this is the difference and this is the difference. Here, there is zero difference. This is the same level. So that's the difference. And now it says, okay, make the square of it. So make the square. That's the square. Here is another one. And here there is no square as the level for the respondent B is the same as average. So there is square with zero space. Okay. And now the formula says, okay, let's sum up this space, this space, and this zero space. This is the sum of all in middle spaces and divided by, for our current case, three. So I would propose that maybe the final variance would be space like this one. But the problem which is present here, and we will do understand it uh, maybe uh, later uh, easily, is that here we have some access with income and here we have some space. For example, let's take income in euros. But we make squares for euros, so we use square of euros. And also Ryan says, okay, your variance is, for example, 100 square euros. But are you familiar with square euros or euros only? Do you know what does it mean to use square euros? Let's try to go to some shop and say, okay, now I will use instead of euros, euros squared, or euros dollar squared, or check round squared. And they will say, okay, I will call a doctor. Wait a minute. No problem. 
So that's the problem. As original scale, for example, for income, some currency is squared, and we are not familiar with squared unit for currency. Okay, you can say for currency maybe not, but for example, square meters, we are familiar with this concept. That is the only concept I would say we are familiar with squares. That's why usually we don't use variance itself for discussion as the scale is different from original one, but we use standard deviation instead of it. And that's very easy. The symbol is S only, and you can imagine that if square is missing, so it's only square root of S squared. So you compute variance and make the square root. And that's standard deviation. So once again, you are back and you use original units. You do not use euros or US dollars or check crowns squared, but you use only euros, US dollars, or check crowns. You don't use, for example, number of children squared. Let's imagine mothers who should treat children who are squared, but you use only children. That's enough sometimes. Okay. So we use standard deviation for our data, mainly for these interpretative purposes. Sometimes, and this very easy, also measure of dispersion of variance, we use something what we call range. Range. And it's very easily to compute. You take maximum value and minimum value and subtract minimum from maximum value. So maximum minus minimum is equal to range. So if you like to describe your data very easily, you do not have to use some special formulas for variance standard deviation, but you can use only range. Difference between maximum and minimum. Okay. So, next step would be, of course, that we would like to compute variance or standard deviation in a SPSS environment. Uh, there are more procedures you can use, but uh, I would like to propose, first of all, uh, to learn something new to show how we can split data and compute results for some group separately. As sometimes you are not interested in the result for all your data together, for example, for male and female grouped together, but you would like to separate your data into two subfiles for male and female, and then, for example, to compare data for male and female. So, first of all, let's learn how to divide your data by splitting. There are two options how to split your data file by menu. You can go into data and split file, nearly at the bottom of this option, or maybe easiest way is to go into these two separated tables. This is icon for splitting file. So it's up to you to choose icon or menu, but still the option is all the same. If you like, for example, to divide your data and analyze them separately for male and female, you have to go into split file and then decide whether you would like to compare groups or to get individual outputs separated for individual groups. I would say that comparison of groups is maybe a better option, but it's up to you to select the second one. It's nearly the same. Only tables will be separated. It will not be in the one table or output. So we will use compare groups. And uh, uh, I only, excuse me, have to change the file. So please uh, use our small file, UVS99, uh, uh, ISSP99, excuse me. Uh, so this small file, please use instead of big one. And maybe 
for simplicity, I will propose close UVS 99 uh, for this time. You will use it for your homework. So please use this small file, splitting data, and compare groups, and we will use gender for splitting. So click on gender and move to the right. So gender variable will be used for separating data for male and female. And then only uh, you have to click on OK. If everything is correct, at the right side down on the screen, you can read split by B48. So now splitting of your data is active. If you would like to change it, so once again to analyze all data together, so that's very easy. Please don't do it, but uh, only uh, follow uh, my orders. I will only click here, analyze all cases, and click on OK. And splitting will be inactive. So here we would like to split our data and analyze separately male and female. And for the first insight, I would propose to compute mean and variance for years of education for the length of education. And we will compare whether male and female on average have the same length or different and whether variance, it means differences between male and female are the same or not. Okay, so the variable about uh, the length of education is the first one in the, our data file called B9, but before the computation of average or variance or standard deviation, we have to be very careful. As you can see here, that there is some artificial code 88 for those who uh, say, okay, I don't know how many years of education I've completed. That's strange, but it can happen. Or no answer at all they gave. These codes, 88s, are present in our data, but we wouldn't like to use these people to include into our computation as if we would continue with these 88s, we would say, okay, he or she studied quite a lot, 88 years, but that's rubbish. Or maybe somebody can study for such a long time, but here we know it's not correct. So here we would like to omit 88 codes from this variable for computation. So this is the first insight into definition of missing values. So if you like to define missing values for our data for some variable, that's very easy. You will go into variable view. Here you have to select the first row, B9, and click into missing column. So double click into missing column, and you can see that by default, usually in your data file, there are no missing values defined previously. Sometimes they can be. If somebody prepared data file with definition, it can be. For example, UVS data file you will use for your homework uh, uh, include uh, also defined missing values. But we would like to define missing values, and it's only one discrete missing value. We will learn more about this dialog later. So please click into discrete missing value and type into the first cell 88 code. Be careful, 88 is DKNA. If you define another missing value, you will do a mistake and all your results will be wrong. And you can see that currently 88 is defined as missing values and all computation will omit these people with no answer for length of education. 
So that's technical operation, but it's necessary to define missing values if there are some values which are without any substantive meaning. Okay, so currently we are prepared to analyze data and we would like once again to compute average or mean, variance and standard deviation for male and female length of education. So the first procedure you can use is descriptive statistics frequencies. First of all, please change this plank of frequency tables. We don't like to see frequency tables, so we will not use it. The next step is to select variable we would like to analyze. This is the first one, length of education or years of education. So move it to the right. And currently, we have to ask for some statistics. So let's choose the first option. And we would like to compute mean, standard deviation, and variance. So on the right side, up, mean, and uh, on the left side, down, standard deviation and variance. Please check these three statistics. You can also, if you like, uh, choose range for computation as we discussed about range. So click on continue, okay. And here you can see results for male and female respondents. So first of all, the question is, how many respondents were included into our computation? So you can see that 18 males were excluded as missing. No information about the length of education for them. For women uh, or female, 18. So quite few. We have 813 with valid answer for male and uh, nearly 1,000 for female. So this is quite a huge number and we can believe to these figures, I guess. Now the question is whether average length of education is different for male and female. So you can see, okay, for male, it's approximately 13 years. For female, it's approximately 12 years. So there is approximately one year difference for male and female on average. Length of education in the Czech Republic. These are only adult people, so 18 and uh, older. So small, but still some difference. Now the second question is, okay, there is small difference, so uh, female study uh, shorter than male, on average, approximately one year difference. But are there differences between individual male and female measured by variance or standard deviation? And if you compare these figures, doesn't matter if you compare standard deviation and standard deviation or variance, variance, you cannot compare variance and standard deviation from the second group. It would be a mistake. This is different from what? So you can see that the variance, individual differences for male and female seems nearly the same for both groups. A standard deviation is approximately three for both these groups. You can also see that the range, but it's computed by maximum minus minimum, so it can be influenced by some big or small values, is also nearly the same. So somebody, I guess, studied approximately maybe 33 years and somebody uh, six years only. That's why the range is 27, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a very easy option by frequencies. I will show you also alternative option by uh, descriptives. So if you will go into descriptives and once again, you will take use of education to the right window and select option. So here you can ask for mean, standard deviation, and variance, and range. You can also uh, leave minimum and maximum if you like to see it. Continue and OK. And the values should be the same only 
arrangement of the table is slightly different. But if you like this format in comparison with this one, use descriptive statistics instead of frequencies. But here you can see very easily the same figures as previously. So, that's variance and standard deviation computation in SPSS environment. And the last one procedure, and this will be uh, the end uh, for today, unfortunately for me, as uh, I expected uh, to do uh, more work, but uh, that's not a problem. Uh, uh, I will show you a procedure which is called explore. First of all, if you would like to use this explore procedure, it's not necessary to split data as this procedure can do it for you inside the procedure. So now we will cancel splitting. So once again, use icon for splitting or data split file and analyze all cases. Select the first option. So now if you go into data file, you cannot see any comment about splitting. So splitting is inactive. And now let's go into analyze, descriptive statistics, and the third option, which is called explore. This is more detailed procedure for descriptive statistics in comparison with frequency and descriptive stats. And you can see there are more windows on the right side. First one is called dependent list. Second one is called factor list, and the third one is called label cases by. So what does it mean, and where to go? Which variables should be independent list and factor list, or in label cases by? So that's very easy. If you like to compute something like average, standard deviation, variance for individual variable, so this variable is called dependent. In this manner, we will discuss about dependence and independence later. But here, believe me, that if you like to compute for some variable, uh, mean or average, variance, standard deviation, it is called dependent list here. So let's take years of education and move it into dependent list. Then, variable by which you would like to split if we use previous expressions is called factor here in this dialog. Factor means the variable by which you are dividing data file or by which you are sorting your data in statistics. So here, if you'd like uh, to see results for gender separately, so factor list will be gender. Next. Please uh, click on statistics. And here you can see there is only one huge box which is called descriptives. And it includes all previously discussed measures such as average, variance, standard deviation, range, etc., etc. So you do not have to click on I would like to ask for mean, variance, etc., but it's by default in this procedure prepared for you. So Please click on continue only and OK. And here you can see quite a huge table. First part for male, second part for female. You can see gender male and female labels. And you can see mean, median, and variance, standard deviation, minimum, maximum range, interquartile range, skewness, kurtosis, we will discuss later, for male as well as for female. Once again, results must be the same as for previous procedures. But here you can see only more figures at one table without necessity to ask for every individual statistics. So if you like to use this output, use this output for your purposes. It's up to you. Three procedures, but nearly the same results included. OK. So, 
for the next time, we will discuss about skewness kurtosis and we will uh, learn how to change our data by recording, computing, and counting. Uh, but today, it's time uh, to uh, assign new homework. So, uh, very easy uh, new homework uh, for you uh, would be try to find one cardinal variable in big data file UVS99, so use the big one, UVS99, CZ, SAV. So try to find some cardinal variable and compute mean, median, standard deviation, variance, of course, not all other uh, statistics we didn't discuss. Try to compare male and female I will give you a hint which variable it is. So, gender variable is V291. Uh, 291 uh, is uh, gender. and try to interpret results, of course. So try to go through the data or questionnaire from UVS, try to compute mean, standard deviation, variance, and median for male and female, and try to interpret results. 